Carl Kilbot, father of headshots, buster of bulls. The Dominator has many names, but all are said in feared whispers. Welcome one and all to my latest Fallout 4 survival mode build, The Dominator. I'd been wanting to make a shotgun based survival build for a long time, and I think I've come up with the very best way to do it. Don't forget to like the video if you want more Fallout builds in the future, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. The Dominator was raised by his sister, their parents having died early on in his life. She was the older of the two and always looked out for her younger brother. They both grew up as intelligent individuals, but neither could be considered all that academic. Whereas most of their peers looked to head into the field of science, engineering, or some other traditional workplace, they instead wanted something different. Standard jobs were dull and boring ways to spend a fleeting existence, so instead they took to a life of crime. The thrill of breaking the rules and doing what others didn't have the guts to surpassed any pleasure that could be derived elsewhere. The pair worked well as a duo, the Dominator being a big brutish man who could beat others down if problems arose, and his sister being slight of frame and light-footed, able to take on any task that required stealth. All their jobs were small time though, and they lacked any real insight into how to go about with larger jobs. This meant that when a charming man offered them to join up with him on a crime spree that would make them richer than they could have hoped, they accepted without a second's thought. The individual had a talent for planning out complex jobs, which would yield them huge rewards. He also seemed to have a sixth sense for if things were about to go south, ensuring they got out before the law arrived and never ended up in cuffs. The trio became good friends who were never seen apart. This did of course lead to a certain level of notoriety in the criminal underworld, but this also granted them additional opportunities. One crime boss in particular decided to enlist the help of the trio for a large scale chem and weapons deal. The boss had been working on getting military grade weaponry straight from the front lines, but was running into some problems. To solve this, she had the two men of the trio enlist within the army, giving her people on the front lines who could help ensure shipments went missing or that documents were changed to cover their tracks. The Dominator was the one mostly in charge of the actual movement of shipments. With such an imposing figure, not many soldiers were willing to question what he was doing. His sister was back in mainland America, dealing with things on that end, and the other member of their trio dealt with all the technical details, ensuring that the Dominator ran into no problems when moving the shipments. This went on for some time, until he received a worrying call from his sister, Apparently, some sort of fight had taken place at their boss's hideout, as the place had been blown to smithereens with nothing left standing. He told his sister to find somewhere to lay low, and left the phone, heading to tell his friend of what had taken place. It didn't take long for the other man to come up with a plan. They couldn't realistically get another shipment out, but they could arrange for another one to take place as a distraction, for them to be able to leave. As all the attention was on stolen weapons and chems leaving the army, they would be able to get out a bit easier. It still took them some time to orchestrate things though, and by the time they had returned home, they had no way to find the third member of their trio. After much debate, the Dominator ended up having to lay low whilst his friend went away to look for his sister. The days turned to weeks, and the weeks turned to months. After some time, he ended up living as a typical civilian, having a suburban house, a wife, and a son. All the time though, he eagerly awaited a call from his friends, ushering him back to his old life. As it was though, the only call to action he ever received was that of the nukes falling on Boston. The Dominator has Strength 7, Perception 1, Endurance 10, Charisma 1, Intelligence 7, and Agility of 1, and Luck 2. As the muscle of the group, it's expected that he's going to be strong. Strength at 7 not only represents this, but gives us good base carry weight, and will give us access to some pretty cool perks. Perception is one of the dump stats of the build, set at 1. As a shotgun user, pinpoint accuracy isn't going to be the biggest concern in the world. Ideally, you'll want your opponent right up in your face anyway, and that's not a shot you should miss. Endurance is maxed out at 10. As this is an up close and personal build, you will be getting shot at a lot. This means you need as many hit points as humanly possible if you want to stay standing at the end of a firefight. Charisma is our second dump stat. When you tower over everyone and carry a laser shotgun at your side, there's not much need to be persuasive with your words. Although not persuasive, the Dominator is still smart, 
as represented by an intelligence of 7. This is going to help us deal with all the high-tech gear this guy loves, as well as granting us slightly more experience than most characters. Agility is the final dumpster of this build. You won't be sprinting around the waste non-stop with this character, instead travelling at a leisurely pace and blasting away as you see fit. The final stat of the build is Luck at 2. You will ideally want to raise this to 3 later on though, through either a skill point or the bobblehead, but for now, this is all it needs to be at. The essential perks of this build are Science, Armourer, Rifleman, Strongback, Lifegiver, and Solar Powered. Science and Armourer are the crafting perks of a build, allowing us to fully mod out our weapons and armour. Before you do any crafting, make sure you've started investing in these perks. Rifleman is the damage perk of a build. Nice and simple. Keep investing into it and your damage will keep increasing. Strongback is a great perk for survival mode. This effectively counters for reduced carry weight and allows you to hoard away plenty of junk, making crafting of all kinds just a little easier. Finally, we have Lifegiver and Solar Powered. Both of these are survivability perks, designed to make the character tougher. Lifegiver will grant a few extra hit points and constant health regen, whereas Solar Powered grants rad reduction, as well as health regen and a boost to strength and endurance, but only during daytime hours. The additional perks of a build are Blacksmith, Steady Aim, Scrapper, Robotics Expert, Scrounger, and Bloody Mess. Blacksmith is the optional crafting skill of a build. You can very well play this character without it, but if you want a little more modding choice, then feel free to invest in it. Steady Aim is a great perk for a shotgun build. Don't bother aiming down sights. Instead, just become a hipfire hero blasting away freely with improved accuracy, and even a damage boost at the final rank. Scrapper is another great crafting perk, yielding you more rare materials from anything you scrap. This helps out no end with getting the uncommon materials you need to improve energy weapons and power armour on a regular basis. Robotics Expert is a mix of a crafting perk and a very specific combat tool. It will help out a great deal when it comes time to craft a robot companion, but don't forget it can also be used to hack machines during combat, providing a great way to deal with sentry bots. Scrounger is awesome. Extra ammo just lying around everywhere. With a final rank you have a chance to gain back all your ammo after emptying out your gun too, which is even better. Finally we have Bloody Mess, a flat damage boost perk to just make you a tiny bit stronger. Yes, the effect is pretty ridiculous, but I say go with it, and watch people explode when you hit them. The main faction for this build will be the Nuka World Raiders. With Raiders, might makes right, so this will be the perfect place for the Dominator to hang out. Out of the Raider trio, you don't really need to favour anyone over the others, so I'd advise helping them all out a little and then seeing who is willing to stay loyal to you. As additional factions, I'd advise first helping out the Brotherhood, and then switching over to the Institute. You won't have any real faction loyalty, and instead will help them out purely to try and get your hands on the best tech the Wasteland has available. As a companion for this build, you will travel around with a giant badass custom sentry bot that kills absolutely everything. I recommend going for Ahab's Helm for the best look, along with some Warmonger or Spiked Armor. Keep in mind you want your robot companion to be able to dish out a ton of damage, but also carry a literal ton of stuff for you. For weapons on my Doom bot, I went with a Shish Kebab and Gatling Laser. The Gatling Laser has insane DPS, and can take down pretty much anything with ease, and the Shish Kebab just looks really cool. These are all just suggestions though. Feel free to play around with your robot companion to see what you can come up with, and if you do manage to make a really sick looking bot, feel free to send me a picture of it on Twitter, at Bad Company Sarge for anyone interested. The main weapon for this build is Protectron's Gaze, with an overcharge capacitor, improved short barrel, recoil compensating stock, and amplified beam splitter. This will be an absolute beast of a laser shotgun, fast firing, accurate, and packing a hell of a punch. Very few enemies can stand up to sustained fire from this weapon. For anyone who requires some additional firepower, then I recommend carrying around a plasma rifle with an improved splitter. Don't forget to put a stock on this so it's a rifle, and put the strongest capacity you can craft for maximum damage. 
If you're in need of an additional weapon, then you can always go for a combat shotgun. However, it won't be as strong as the energy shotguns, and it will likely eat up much more of your carry weight, along with all the shotgun shells you'll need to have on you. I'd personally recommend keeping this on your companion, so that it's still somewhat to hand, but also isn't weighing you down. Under Armour doesn't matter too much, so try to go with something that just fits the character. I personally had a mix of robot, metal and raider pieces over road levers. Power Armour however is very important. As the main body of armour, you want all three Tesla T60F pieces. All other pieces will be X01 Mark VI, and everything will need to have prism shielding on it. As additional upgrades, I recommend Tesla coils on chest, calibrated shocks on the legs, and internal database on the head. This will give you more carry weight, XP, and up close damage. The key part of this suit are the Tesla pieces. These give a significant damage increase to all energy weapons, making your shotguns even stronger than they already were. The Dominator is a power armour tank who specialises in dishing out damage at close range. Keep in mind that a tank in survival mode is far from immortal, so keep half an eye on your health in firefights, as you may well need to use a fair bit of aid in tricky battles. As you deal the most damage up close with your shotguns, you'll want to try and avoid engaging enemies at range. Try to close the distance as much as possible before you start firing, and don't be afraid to hide behind cover and wait for the enemy to come to you. In tight corridors, you are absolutely unstoppable, able to just walk through and pull the trigger to kill anything in front of you. Out in the open though, you will likely find yourself relying on your robot companion to deal with a lot of enemies. Often the best strategy is to just focus on killing anyone who gets close to your robot, and let it do most of the heavy lifting for you. Most of all though, this is just a really fun build that makes survival mode feel not quite as gruelling as it can at times. A fair bit of the time you can just casually wander about, without having to worry about what's around every corner. Revel in the fact that you can go toe to toe with anyone you meet, and do things your own way. If you enjoyed this build, don't forget to like and subscribe. Why not take a look at some of my other content too? In addition to builds, I also do challenge runs and fun one-off videos, all for your entertainment. If you're looking for more Fallout builds, then there's already over 50 on the channel, but additionally, there's going to be another Fallout 4 survival mode build the same time next week, so stay tuned for that.